Hello everyone and welcome back to my sewing room. Today is Friday, May 21st, 2021 and it's a beautiful afternoon here in Utah and today is my Sew Simple Shapes Remix Series episode number three and we're going to be doing uh, the May Block and which is number three and um, so this is the third, this is the first one okay that we did in the series and this is the second one that we've done. And now today, this is the May block, which is number three. I thought it would be really fun to do something a little bit patriotic so we could have it for Flag Day, you know, 4th of July, things like that. And so um, what we're doing with this block is um, it's 12 by 16 inches finished. But I've used two sets of so simple shapes for this one. Okay, let me just set this right here for a second. I've got all my stuff in my little envelope here. But we're using six of the Autumn Love. And we're using six of the Prim. I wanted to show you that, yes, you can do new blocks out of each set. But I wanted you to be able to mix them all up. And eventually, maybe you can just use one or two shapes from several sets, and that would be really fun because I do that quite a bit. So um, before we get started on this, I just that reminded me because this was hanging over the back of here. If you're following my um, Sew Your Stash series, I just wanted to let you know I'm just getting ready to quilt this, and I wanted to show it to you before I quilted it, meaning the next series it will already be quilted so this is from my sew your stash series this is my quick broken dishes block and this is in the two inch and it's episode 15 where the tutorial is in this when i do um four inch blocks and two inch blocks this is the two inch block sewn totally for my scraps and that's the one where i showed you my doll quilts and what i you know how i uh, do little scraps with my doll quilts but i also wanted to do a new sewing mat here under, um, this is Miss Doris that I'll be sewing with today. And so I made this and I'm just getting ready to quilt it. And so it's a five by nine setting, I believe. Yeah, so that means it's going to finish at 18 inches because these finish at two inches, 18 inches by 10 inches, which is gonna be really perfect for under my featherweight. You can always, if you have a larger machine, add more blocks or whatever. But I've got flannel here instead of, batting just like I showed you that I do with my doll quilts because I want this to also double as a doll quilt when I get tired of using it as a sewing mat and then I've got some backing fabric here um, and this is from this is my embroidery print from my wide back in my granny sheet collection that's still available and so I'm going to quilt that and then I've cut two two and a half inch by width of fabric for the binding and so um, next week on my Sawyer Stash series, I'll have this all ready and sitting right underneath Miss Doris. So I just kind of wanted to show you what that looked like before I quilted it and finished it. Okay, let's set that aside, get back to applique the easy way. All right, so let's talk about this block. Let's set it up here. Look at this. I want to show you this cute little thing that we made years ago. When we were camping in the trailer, I don't know, how many years ago do you think that was, Cassidy? Probably 10 years ago. 10. <laughs> but I can't remember what those are called, but they're the little plastic beads that you um, design on a little board and then you iron on them. Do you remember what they're I called? think they're perler beads, but I don't know. Perler sure. beads. I can't remember. But anyway, so we did it in the shape of a sewing machine. And so that's holding up my picture here on my, on my um, book stand. And yes, that's me. If you follow my blog, you, you know that's me because that's the header in my blog. But that's me when I was three years old in the kitchen. My mom took a picture that Sunday morning. I've got curlers in my hair getting ready for church. And that's our um, vacuum. And what you would do was you hooked the bonnet of a hairdryer onto the vacuum. And then you would push the switch on the old vacuum and it would blow the air out. And it was warm air. And so it just so your vacuum doubled as a as a hair dryer too. It was pretty cool. So I always had a block 
a book, a vintage book in front of me. So that was kind of fun. Okay, so I digress. A little chatty today, apparently. Okay, so here's the block. I wanted to talk about um, the fabrics first because I know you guys always ask me what fabrics I've used. So we're just going to go through this. This is, I'm always using B backgrounds. This is the background that I've used for this one. Looks like this. Okay, and that's my pewter shirtings. And, you know, I have a lot of V backgrounds, so I'll be using that. Those a lot. And this is from my Prim collection. That's what's used for the circles here and um, for the center of the tulip. Now, while I'm going through this, I'm going to pull out my shapes. These are my little pockets. And then I'll show you the shapes that go with each fabric. And then that might help you to, you know, keep a little organized and know exactly what you're doing. Let's pull these out. When I pulled together for this block, I just used these, my little B pocket inserts here. They might be organized and they work out perfectly and I can put them right in my binder. That reminds me, I'm gonna show you something about my little binder later too that you're gonna love. Okay, so that's what I used for this. This is the K11, and because it's K, and because it's in this color, I know that it's prim. So all the prim, so simple shapes start with a K. So I use this fabric from prim, did the circles, but I'm also going to sew this right here, which is this shape, which is K43. Let me put it against there, and you can see the number. And that's what's tucked underneath that tulip shape right there. Okay, so that's what I used for that fabric. For this fabric is, um, I used this square from Prim, this rectangle, sorry, K29, and this is my Farm Girl Vintage gingham. Any gingham or red and white stripe or anything would work. But I wanna point out, see all the lines in here? We use that for the sew along for special things. But notice when I put it up here, that this is only the shape to here, so when you trace, you're gonna trace around here and then um, just draw a line from here to here. So you're only gonna use this size of this shape, again, for that flag. I mean, you could make it longer if you wanted to, but I didn't really feel that the design needed it. I liked it shorter. Okay, so that's that one. These are the three leaves, which is the same shape that I showed you earlier for the center of the tulip, which is K43. And this one is out of my flea market collection. This is out of my prim. It's the same stems that I've been using in the previous series because, you know, I showed you in the series one and two in those episodes how I do this and wrap it around my spools. And so I already have some on there, so instead of cutting more, I just use that. And this is what I'm using for the crock. This is pewter colored in my B cross stitch. And again, I made a little adjustment on this. This is F34. This is an autumn love shape because it starts with F and it's orange. But I wanna hold this up here and see how you can see the top, how it extends above there a little bit. This was originally a mason jar, but I wanted this to look more like a crock, and crocks don't go up that tall, so I took a half inch off of this. So basically, when I'm traced, when I traced for that, let me pull that shape. When I traced for that, I just simply measured down a half of an inch. And then I'm just going to ignore this line, and this is, this is what I'm going to sew on, okay, so that I can get that shape. So you can manipulate these shapes to kind of do what you want, and I often do that so I can use a shape two or three times for different things. Okay, so this is the center of the sunflower. This is from my Prim collection, and that circle that I used is in Autumn Love, and it's the F2 circle, okay? And then this is butterscotch for my B cross stitch fabric. I'm always picking threads off of everything. <laughs> I 
I'm a quilter, yes, I have threads on everything, including my clothes. Okay, so this is butterscotch, and this is, the sunflower is from Autumn Love, and it's the F23 one. Okay, there's two sizes of sunflowers in Autumn Love. This is F23. And then for all the cute little yellow flowers, I use my prim um, yellow gingham, the daisy gingham, and... Um, Let's find that little shape right here. That's from Prim. And it is K56. Okay, I did five of those. And then this fabric right here is what I used for the star down here on the crock. That star is from Autumn Love and it's F15 star. Now I also use this fabric and for the quarter inch bias tape right here, stripe. And um, so I always cut that five eighths of an inch wide and you I probably start out with like a 10 inch piece. And I already showed you again how to do those in episode one and two. So just cut a, like a 10 by five eighths of an inch wide for that. And then for this one, out of this fabric is what I did the square in the flag. And that's for my prim, and that's K15. And then I also use the half inch bias tape maker. Let me grab these out so you can see. So this is what the clover bias tape makers that is for the quarter inch that you cut five eighths of an inch wide. And then um, I used for the half inch right here, this is the yellow one, and I cut it one inch wide and run that through for this. And again, just like a 10 inch long would be plenty for that. And that's out of this fabric right here. Okay, is there any shapes? Oh yeah, the flagpole. Oh, I didn't pull that fabric. Oh, okay, I used this for the flagpole and this is in my prim collection it's the ticking stripe and um that is also quarter inch so you cut that five eighths of an inch wide and i cut it across the stripe so the stripes would go that way okay i think that covers everything oh no i there's one more fabric i forgot to pull but i'll tell you what this is this is from my prim fabric as well and the tulip is F16. Let me put it against there so you can see it. And that's what that is, F16. That's from Autumn Love. And again, that's from my Prim collection. Okay, now I think that's all the fabric and all the shapes. I've told you every shape that we're using, five from each of those two collections. And then all you have to do is take that shape, trace it onto my sew-in interfacing, and then we just put it right directly on the fabric and sew around those shapes. And so I'll show that as I get started with that in a minute. I've saved one of everything here that I haven't sewn before. I sewed these, you know, beforehand so that you don't have to watch me sew the same shape over and over again. So I'm just gonna do one of those at a time. But before I start showing um, how to do that, I wanna flip over here, <laughs> Cass, and show you. Okay, so these are my two binders that I've shown you before where I keep my So Simple Shapes. I'm gonna be needing a third one here pretty soon because as you saw in my video last week, I have two new sets coming out this year and so I'll be adding those. But what I'm so excited about, what we've been working on and they're ready now, this is a free, PDF download on the Riley Blake Designs website. And I will leave a link here in the description of this video so that you can go right there and download. But what this is, is a cutting guide for fabric and sewing interfacing. So if you've done my sew alongs with my Sew Simple Shapes before, you know I always have a cutting guide to every shape saying, you know, this, this, here's a picture of this shape and this is what size of fabric you need and what size of interfacing you need. 
you know, etc. And so what I wanted to do was have them all together. So we started with number one. So this is my bloom. So in here, this tells you, see it says use when cutting fabric and sewn in interfacing. So this has a picture so that you have easy identification of all the shapes that are in my bloom set. Okay, and then if you want to do A17, you know the A17, that's what it looks like. And this is the size of fabric and interfacing that works for that set, two inches by three inches. And so that's detailed on all the bloom. Okay, then Cozy Christmas is my next set. So now you can see a picture at a glance of all the Cozy Christmas shapes, what they look like. And here's my fruit salad. Then we move on to be happy. And again, notice that these are all in different colors. The, sh the shapes themselves, the writing is printed. These all start with A. Number two starts with B, which is my cozy Christmas. And my fruit salad starts with C. And we just go through the alphabet. So that helps you identify them. This is my be happy. So you can see all of my be happy shapes at a glance. See what they look like what size fabrics you need to cut. And here's my Let's Bake, which is set five. This is my sixth set, Autumn Love. This is my Farmhouse Star So Simple Shapes, which is G. I've had a few questions about this. I have used this with my wool and things like that in tutorials, but I'm excited to, I guess I can kind of announce, I'm gonna be doing something with this set um, next spring with a new collection that I'm working on. So that's something to look forward to. These are G. And this is my Farm Sweet Farm set. And they start with H. Granny's Garden set starts with I. And of course, some of these sets are larger than others, meaning they have more templates in each set. Uh, this is my Vintage Happy 2. I had had questions on this too. I put a few extra bonus shapes in here and I will be designing projects with those during this series. I'll be doing blocks with those. That's what I was waiting for to do these extra um, sets for this remix series to get started. And so there's that vintage happy set. And then here's my prim, which we'll be working with today, which starts with K and then um, that's the other ones we'll be adding to. Oh, yeah, let me tell you about the last page. Thanks, Cass. Left a little part for notes if you wanted to add notes. Um, but right here on the last page, I put the bias tape maker sizes that I use and how wide I cut those fabrics so that you always have those at a glance within here. Now, this this will always already be updated each time a new set comes out. So my new set, my next set that comes out is my Happy Place set that will go in with my stitch fabric. That will be here in July. And so we'll, we will just add that onto here and you can download that, you know, separately and just keep adding on. And then my chicken salad set. So I just wanted to let you know about that. This is a great thing. It will help us keep all organized. I'm keeping all of mine together in my first binder, but you certainly could separate them and just keep them you know, in between, like the Cozy Christmas one right before Cozy Christmas, the fruit salad one right before fruit salad, you know, et cetera, however you wanted to do it. And so I just wanted to let you know about that. I know we're doing a lot of talking about this before we're getting started on the sewing, but I did want to let you know about that because this series is going to continue on and I want you to be able to be organized because if you're organized, then you just enjoy it more. Okay, so I'm gonna grab all my little pieces from out of here. I've got my background fabric cut. This block will finish at 12 by 16. And so I've cut my background 14 by 18. You can, you know, cut it bigger and then just trim it down afterwards, which is what we do after applique. But I would cut it at least, um, you know, two inches bigger than the applique. So there's that, we'll set that aside. And um, let me turn on, turn on my lights. I'm gonna turn that light off so it doesn't glare. And here's my prepared bias tapes. Just wanted to show you what they look like. I've already pressed them. Okay, so 
see this fabric right here? I know I need to sew the star on it, but it looks a little bit wrinkled to me from sitting there. And so I always press mine first because I don't want to distort it. So I'll just bring it over here. I just turned that on, my iron on, so I don't know how fast it's going to heat up. There we go. It's a vintage iron, you know, so they do heat up fast. So I will just um, kind of start sewing this first and kind of explain it, meaning if you're new to this, even though this is number three in the series, if you've never seen me do this before, I simply just start sewing right on the line and then I over sew and I don't back stitch or anything like that. And that's what I'll be doing. And um, I do use a little bit of a smaller stitch, but not really, really tiny. And let's see, what else can I tell you about that? I think that's all I do. I just, I like to use a foot that I can see exactly where my needle is going in. And so that I know I'm sewing exactly on the line because I know that I've traced around that shape exactly. And if I sew exactly on the line, my piece is gonna end up being the exact same size as the shape. Okay, so I'm gonna get sewing all of this. Okay, all right, so I've got all of these shapes sewn, but I'm gonna talk to you about um, the ones that need to be clipped. So this one needs to be clipped because we've got these little areas here. And so what we're gonna do is just grab a sharp pair of scissors and I'm just gonna do one clip. I'm not gonna cut like this, but I'm gonna take the tip of my scissors and go right to that point right there and do one clip. Now, if you need to see close up when you're doing this, let me put my readers on real quick. Okay, because I just wanna make sure that I don't clip into my sewn line, I just wanna clip to it. One clip, just like that. You see that, sis? Mm -hmm. Okay. I know I'm always asking you that, but I just wanna make sure. <laughs> okay, so that's all I do for that. And this one, no clipping. I just need to trim an approximate quarter inch seam. It's an outer circle, no clipping. No clipping after I trim. No clipping after I trim. No clipping. This one's going to have to be clipped here in a few little spots and one in this cleavage area. Okay, so I'll leave that separate. This one, same thing as this one. Just in these little cleavage areas or the areas that go into a V, one little clip. And this one, 
is just one clip after I trim the quarter inch seam allowance. This one I think I detailed in my last one in my uh, episode number two. Now this one, notice I did sew on here all around the lines. I will have to clip right here in these inner curves. And I'll just put two or three clips, again, right to the seam, but not past it. Now, before I start, um, before I'm going to turn one just to show you how I turn them all as well. Now, this is kind of, um, you know, they're all the same. It's going to become repetitive. This is, um, that's why I'm just showing you one or two. If you really are a beginner and have never done this method before, you know, I would recommend going and watching my one and two episode for a little bit more detailed. But I wanted to show you that when you have things that you want to make sure that you sew straight on, I don't know if you noticed that in the flag I was taking a little bit of time. Because this is on gingham, I just made sure that because you can see through this before I placed it on here, that it was going straight so that I would sew across so that my gingham, you know, would end up straight on my flag. You can always stick a pin in. I, I just, I don't unless it's great big because I find that uh, my interfacing kind of sticks to the fabric a little bit and it's nice and it just doesn't slip around. So that doesn't bother me. Did the same thing for this square, for this plaid, so that this plaid could be a little bit straight there. Okay, so when I turn all of my shapes, this is what I do with all of them. I either take my seam ripper or my scissors and I pull the interfacing in the center away from the piece. So this one, and then I just do a little teeny clip. That way I know I have not clipped into the fabric at all. Okay, and then I'll just do like a little X. This one, literally, it will be like an X because that's kind of what the shape is like. Now I don't wanna, you know, cut all the way to there, to the end, I wanna leave that intact. I just wanna make this big enough so that I can turn it right side out. Now with shapes like this, I simply just take my thumb and my finger and just push out. You're not gonna be able to push you know, all of them out because they're tiny. A lot of people have told me they like to use hemostats. I don't use them, but I have them here so that I can show you that you can use hemostats if you need to. But I just find that um, these are my essential tools, this along with my iron when shaping. So when you turn it inside out, it looks like that. And you're like, oh, I did something wrong. No, you didn't do anything wrong. You sewed on the lines. That's exactly what it's supposed to look like. Here's the clover point to point turner. And I just gently push that out and I shape it. And I mean gently. You don't really need to push hard to shape it. And then I just go around like this. Okay, and once I get to that point, you're like, okay, well, those are all shaped out, but what about this? Well, that's where the pressing comes in. So most of the times uh, on my mat, I'll just take this and take my roller, and I'm really just pressing where I have pushed that out, where I've shaped it and pushed it out. Okay, and then I'll take it over to the iron and just press it from the top. And then even after that, sometimes I'll take um, the quilter's clappers from Riley Blake Designs and just set these on top, get the heat out, get it smooth. But it really doesn't have to be like super duper flat and smooth because obviously you're either going to hand applique or machine applique this. And, you know, when you put it on here, this one isn't applique yet. See, you can see how it's not. But you can easily do this by machine or by hand. Just use matching thread. Okay. So I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna trim these and turn them, get them shaped, and then we're gonna go over to the work table. I'm gonna show you how I lay out this block. Okie dokie, here we are at my work table. And I've done a few things ahead of time, just so I can kind of show you how I set this up and what I do. So because this square goes on the flag, see I've turned that into one piece. So this has become one piece, those two pieces. I have glued, that on the back of the tulip and again I'm using the Sue glue the Sue daily glue and then I've glued all of the centers on the flower so they're one piece this as well 
and then I made the crock all into one piece. I haven't glued those back pieces over. In fact, I'll do that right now. And then all I have, you know, I've just kind of shortened the amount of pieces that I have to worry about pinning down. And um, it just helps me to lay things out a little bit better. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, oh, I did, I did glue this, this flag pole down. So here's my center, um, center line on my background fabric. So I just simply pressed it in half and I made sure that half of that piece was lined up with the print on my fabric. I'm just, you know, you don't have to do that, but I'm just telling you how I do things. I kind of like my, the prints straight as I can. So I have my center line. Now, instead of putting my flag, I started about halfway up, flag pole right down the center, I put it onto the right side of the center. So basically, this is the center line right there, okay? And then now I can go ahead and place this. I grab my ruler, I think I'm gonna place it about, oh, an inch and an inch and a quarter up. And I'm just gonna center that. And I can tell when it's centered because look, here's my crease line. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see down this far cast? Yeah, I'm always asking you that. Just a little. Let's adjust that, okay. So here's the crease line. Here's, I knew that this is centered because I measured it. So I know that this inside point is centered. And it just, you know, I'm always using different things like that to help me and guide me so that I know what is centered. But, you know, again, there's always the ruler and, uh, you know, a tape measure that I always keep handy. So once I have that there, ow, I just poked myself. Okay, then I just pin these. Don't have to worry about pinning these anymore. I just pin this right here and I pin in a little bit farther so I can lift up and glue. But what I did with these stems is I pinned about a quarter of an inch away from the center, but just right here. And then I can continue on to where I need those to be. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I just place one thing at a time. I know this is gonna go over there, this is gonna go here, but I'm gonna start with the flag. So I know I'm gonna take this previous piece right here and I'm gonna measure that. Sorry if that was too fast for you to see, but that was just the first block that I had done. Let me measure it over to the side. So it's about 15 and a half inches tall from top to bottom. So I'm gonna place that tape measure there at the 15 and a half inches. And then I'll just put the flag right there and then I'll move. Thanks Cass, <laughs> Cass's finger goes in there. <laughs> so I'll just move that and then my flag goes right there on the edge. And I'm gonna move that out of the way. And then I just simply place a couple of pins there so that I know that's not gonna go anywhere. Now, before I go any farther with this, while we're talking about height-wise, because if this is going to be a quilt block, you know, you want it to measure, like I said, 12 inches wide, finished, and 16 inches tall. And so I want my piece to be about 15 to 15 and a half inches tall so that I'm not going past my quilt block size. With this one, I have an idea that I thought it would be really cute framed. And so let's talk about frames for a minute. Let me pull this one in that's already done. So I had a couple of barnwood frames. And so I knew because my quilt block was 12 by 16, I would grab a 12 by 16 frame. But the problem with this is the frame itself isn't 12 by 16 opening. It's like 15 and a half by 11 and a half. So look how tight that is. If I would have, you know, I knew I had this down in the garage. If I had thought about this when I was doing the block, I maybe could have just made the crock a little bit shorter or pulled everything down a little bit and that would have worked. So if you have a 16 by 20 frame, I mean, excuse me, 12 by 16 frame, then, you know, you can just kind of make it work by shrinking your pieces together when you're gluing. You can always make the stems a little bit shorter and just make everything a little bit compact. So this frame isn't gonna work for this other than I could, you know, do that for this one knowing I have that now. But I looked through um, Hobby Lobby. I went to Hobby Lobby to see if they had 
one a little bit bigger in these barn wood frames because I know they sell these that are made out of real barn wood and they don't have a back to them or anything. And this one is gonna work perfectly and it is a size, I couldn't remember the opening, it was kind of a different opening. So this measures 17 and a quarter, 17 and a half, you know, 17 and a quarter. And then this one is like 13 and a half. So it's probably supposed to be a 14 by 18. But anyway, so, but look how cute these look framed. That's, I do my applique blocks framed quite a bit. And I think this is a perfect one to do that with because it's just, I don't know, I would like to hang this, hang this on my wall for Americana design, um, summer, just, I don't know. I think it's kind of fun. Makes a really fun gift. You don't have to quilt it or anything. You just need to applique it. And how I would put that in the frame is I would just cut a piece of foam core board that fits in the back here. Here's that. I'm gonna pull this up. It's kind of pushed down, but this is the information on this frame in case you want to see that. So I would just cut a piece of foam core board this size right here, and then I would put batting behind this piece and then mount it that way. So, okay. Enough about the framing idea. I might take a picture of that inside the frame and, and uh, show you that at the end just so you can kind of see what that would look like. All right, so I know what I want my height to be. And then the sunflower is just gonna be kind of over to the side of the flag. Let me look at the old one. I mean, the original one. I don't know how old it is, <laughs> a couple weeks. It's about a half inches, half inch away and a half inch down. And so, you know, that I'm not gonna glue it yet, so that's not set in stone. I'm just gonna take a couple of pins, and then if I decide to glue it there, that's when I'll go ahead and bend this right here. See how nicely that curves, because we originally cut it on the bias. And then I'll pin like that. And let's see, that's bending over at the top, okay? And then this one, same thing, I kind of want it just to be off of the flag a little bit, you know, kind of below it. So I'll stick a couple of pins in there. And that makes it easier because this is already glued together, so I just treat that as one piece. And then again, if that's how I'm going to do it, I can end up kind of curving that, putting a couple of pins there to curve that piece. And I can actually, you know, I don't need it quite that long, so I can just cut that down, tuck it underneath. And again, doing all this before I'm even gluing, just to make sure that I don't have to adjust. You can adjust with the Sioux glue, you know, if you have to, but I don't, that's why I like to do this all up front originally, so that I don't have to worry about all of that. Okay, so I know I need a leaf over here and I just kind of have it coming off the stem, but I wanna make sure that I can fit a flower in there. And then after I lay this out, I'm gonna go ahead and um, measure across to make sure I'm not going too wide for my block. So I'm gonna have another leaf here Just working out of my, whoops, just working out of my pin bowl here. Oh, I forgot to say that when I set this up, all I did simply is put the star about um, an inch up from the bottom of the crock. And then I did this a quarter of an inch between the star point and then a quarter of an inch between these two strips. And then I simply just pressed these and then glued them as you saw. Okay, so I've got a leaf there. I've got this leaf coming off this stem. It's kind of overlapping that. And then I've got three flowers here that I'm just gonna pin here. And before, well, I'm gonna pin this one here. But before I pin these two, I'm gonna make sure that this measures no more than an 11 and a half inches wide from this point to this outer point so that when I sew it into a quilt block, 
See, that's 11, so I can even come out a little bit wider if I wanted to not have them so crowded. And so, let's see. So this is five and a half right here, right on the center mark of my fold. And this comes out to 11, so that's going to be good because obviously five and a half plus five and a half is 11. So that's where I want this widest flower, just right there. So I'm going to leave it there and grab a pin and stick it in there. Then I know I can put this flower wherever I want to because I'm not worried about, you know, it's sticking out to that point. You can kind of twist and turn these however way you want them to be, however it fits in there. Okay. Now I feel like I'm you know, have it set where I want it to be set. Again, if you're going to be using a frame for it, then you can just grab the frame. You don't have to worry about it being a quilt block because this is bigger than 12 by 16. And I just look at it and kind of make sure. And the reason I did a halfway point here is I don't want it to be like all crowded on this side and then this side looks like it need to come out. So that's why I measured five and a half inches out and five and a half inches out from the center. So I knew that when I put it in a frame, this was centered and then these would be centered as well. So look how cute that is. I'm really pleased with that. And um, now, now that everything's pinned down and um, of course I'm on my, you know, pinning to my design board here, then I just go ahead and I can just start gluing everything, lifting everything up. And I just glue everything. And when I'm finished with the glue, then I take the pins out and I go ahead and hand applique or machine applique and just using matching thread. So I hope that you have enjoyed today's So Simple Shape Remix tutorial. And next week I'll be back with, I believe it's my turn to do um, the, the socialites block. So I'll be back with that. I'll kind of, that's going to be one of my Sawyer stash series as well, because of course, you know, I'm going to do my block in, in uh, using my stash. So I will see you then. Chat with you later. Mm -hmm.